Hello, my name is Michael Morana, and I'm the International Approvals Manager for NTS. And today uh, we are going to discuss the international approvals for Brazil certifications. Uh, the reason for Brit Brazil certifications is number one, it's the biggest country in South America and uh, very populated. So there's a large market for uh, products entering the country. And not only is it a large country and uh, a big market, but the certifications can be a little confusing. So our intent on this video is to uh, just uh, explain and, and simplify the process for you. The agenda for the British Brazil certification will be a Brazil certification overview, current requirements for radio, EMC, and safety certifications, recent and upcoming changes, a summary, and then uh, we can go into questions. The Brazil certification overview uh, is that there's three agencies that are involved, and for the most part, we'll be talking about two of them. For radio certifications, uh, a lot of companies and uh, worldwide, we discuss this as type approval, and it's uh, products that contain the wireless devices. The regulatory agency is Anatel, and certification is mandatory for all products or host products that contain wireless devices. The process involves in-country testing. Local representation is required for this uh, certification. The validity of certification depends on the product category, and the three categories are terminal equipment, which is category one, restricted radiation equipment, which is category two, and remaining all the remaining radio equipment, which would be category three. EMC certification itself is not required, but it's always part of either radio certification or the safety certification, meaning the testing is done so that radio certification can be acquired. However, there's no certification for the EMC itself. It's considered radio or type approval certification. The other type of certification would be for safety. Uh, that is called in Metro. It's an in Metro mark. The in Metro certification is mandatory when selling to Brazilian government or if you are marketing medical equipment. Wires and cables are also required to have in Metro's uh, mark. And also uh, appliances and uh, products that fall into that category would also require the in Metro certification. This testing can be done in country, but the good thing about in Metro certification is that uh, for most part, uh, companies can get safety and EMC test reports. And as long as those test reports are done to the Brazilian standards and the laboratory is ILAC full member, then that test uh, report will be required, um, accepted. Local representation is also required for this in Metro Mark. And the validity is normally for most products two years. So after two years, unless the product is end of life, uh, needs to be recertified. So let's go into talking about the current requirements for radio certifications. And the reason we say it's current is Brazil, just like a lot of the countries, uh, because of technology and advancement and also just the fact that uh, regulations change as, as the requirements uh, they see fit for the country because of interference reasons or whatever the reasons, uh, regulations are always being updated. So for the current requirements, test reports are not accepted from outside of Brazil, meaning this Brazil is an in-country testing uh, requirement. Two samples are normally required for most products, and it is 
one sample that's conducted with an SMA connector connected to the output of the radio, and then one report, uh, sample that is required. Uh, it's a normal sample that can just function uh, normally as uh, operating, and then it would be looked at as far as on the antenna. And that's why the EMC is included into the radio certifications. The application documentation requirements would be uh, normally you have an ISO cert, you have all these different documents from the manuals to the uh, test reports that's going to be provided by the OCD. Uh, this whole package is uh, going to be required and what we do is we gather all that information from you, the client, and we submit them along with the uh, test report that's done by Brazil. What makes Brazil a uh, unique and a little complicated is that it's a two-stage approval process. What happens first is during the first stage, you have an OCD lab, which uh, the OCD just stands for Designated Certification Organism. And it's a lab that's accredited by Anatel of course, an in-country Brazilian lab that does the testing on your product. It gets certified as far as by the lab. And then along with all the documentation and application that we talked about above, that gets submitted to Anatel for the homologation number. So the two stages would be testing to get certification on it that the product passes and then we apply for the Anatel homologation number. The language requirements for the manuals are in Portuguese, and the estimated certification time is normally 8 to 12 weeks. We wrote 10 down there, but due to COVID, uh, it's normally been extended to about 12 weeks. The radio certification requirements uh, for the logos, is the Anatel mark as shown above. This uh, logo also is accompanied by a text label, and that is made up of the homologation number. It's five letters and uh, slash numbers, followed by two, followed by another five. The first five numbers would be the homologation code. The next two, would be the year of issuance, and the next five would be the main product product manufacturer. And what happens is that is uh, decided and uh, supplied to by Anatel itself. The color scheme for the logo is yellow, blue, and green. Uh, if color is not wanting to, or if it clashes with your product, then black and white can be used, but it's only those two color schemes that's allowed. E-labeling is allowed only if you have a display attached permanently to your product, the host device. And label and manual requirements uh, are also required. There is a statement that's required on the label, and the translation of it is, this equipment is not entitled to protect, protection against harmful interference and must not cause interference in duly authorized systems. So this label and this statement needs to be attached to the product and the logo, the Anatel logo needs to be on that label and as close to the manufacturer and that model number as possible. For the manual requirements, this test box that uh, we just described the uh, translation needs to be put in the manual along with the Anatel link of www.gov.br slash Anatel slash PT slash BR. Safety certification requirements differs uh, just uh, slightly because for radio, we had to do in-country testing. For safety, we don't have to. It can be done by test reports. That's normally the preferred methods. No one 
uh, likes to send products uh, into another country for testing unless it's mandatory. So they do accept test reports. The requirements is the laboratory has to be an ILAC full member. Otherwise, the in-country testing is a requirement. The test reports normally that are accepted of would be the EU equivalent test standards to the uh, Brazilian standards that are called out for whatever product you are manufacturing. Samples are not required, again, unless manufacturer decides to do in-country testing. And the certification process is a little easier because you don't have to do samples unless you're testing in country. And then you do the application, you get your local representation, and you submit all the required documents along with the test reports for certification. For label requirements in Metro Country Certification Mark, uh, in the mark with the I that says in Metro, that would be uh, required for all mandatory products. For any voluntary certification that is done, it would be the second logo. That would be the uh, certification body mark. Just like most countries, the uh, there's a lot of changes going on, uh, you know, present and past. So, and of course, future. So. As of January 27th, the new requirement that caught a lot of people off guard was that samples need to now be sent to the laboratory with the label attached to the product. Before, there was a lot of times that companies would send products that was uh, in R&D uh, and, and the tags weren't on them yet, the labels. So they would send the products and send the labels later to have that attached as the testing and certification uh, was in process, but now a lab needs to have all that information on the product when they receive it. Otherwise, they're not accept, uh, they cannot accept that product to be tested. So as a sample is sent to the laboratory, all the electronic marking, permanent or temporary, needs to accompany this uh, product. The packaging label also needs to have all the information as far as the manufacturer model name and country of origin, and that needs to match the label that's on the product. So when the OCD receives your product, they need to make sure there's two things that stated on these labels. Again, it's very important that these labels have this, otherwise it gets rejected now. The plant where this sample is manufactured needs to be on there. And also the traceability of the sample needs to be sent for testing. And the traceability needs to make sure that even if it's a R&D sample, it needs to have a, a serial number, not only on the product, but it needs to be on all the markings. Starting June 1, the interesting thing that's happening with Brazil is they are now going to start allowing outside labs. So no longer do you need an OCD uh, test lab. You will be able to test outside of Brazil for certain product categories. And one of these product categories will be data network equipment. So after June 1st, these test reports that are done outside of Brazil can be accepted. However, these test reports need to be very specific. Number one, it needs to be tested to in accordance with Anatel test standards. The configurations need to be set up exactly as they would be if it was done at an OCD lab in Brazil. And the reference standards all need to be stated and tested to. The test report itself also needs to be currently, it, it needs to mirror the OCD lab with the test equipment, the photos, the information, all the equipment for test reports, uh, all the equipment used to generate this test report, 
the calibration of the equipment. It, it's more or less everything that a um, A2LA or or NIST or NAV Lab approved lab would uh, provide in their test reports, and that's why it's so important that this lab is registered with ILAC. Uh, to be registered with ILAC, you normally are associated with one of those accrediting bodies. Product certifications now also change from indefinite to three years validity. So although you get the relief of not having to do in-country testing, your certification now goes from indefinite to three years. To continue with the conversation of what happens after June, uh, the lab needs to be ILAC. Again, we're, we're, we're stressing that fact because if the, mem if the lab is not a member of ILAC, this report will be rejected and the product will have to be tested um, at Brazil at an OCD lab or at another lab, but this lab has to be ILAC approved. There's three type of labs that's going to be uh, outside of the OCD and that's going to be a first party lab. It's a laboratory of a manufacturer product representative which operates under their responsibility. So it's the party interested in the product evaluation. A second party lab is categorized as a laboratory of the buyer or input supplier to the manufacturer of the product under evaluation, which operates this in his responsibility. So it's an interested party. And NTS would be a good example of the third party lab. It's an independent laboratory which has no link whatsoever with the parties interested in the product under evaluation and which had not participated in the product development process. Starting June 4th, I mean July 4th of this year, uh, cybersecurity is starting to take effect. It was approved in January 5th and 180 days after that, it actually becomes a requirement a lot of countries uh, are also doing cybersecurity from China to Russia and a lot of the EA, uh, CIS states. But um, cybersecurity is important and it it's involved and required by any product that is connected to the outside world. The good thing is this is not a testing uh, requirement, so no additional testing is required. And it's a complete paper process that you have to apply for um, the certification. It's normally going to be a terminal equipment that has a capability of connection to the internet. So again, anything that connects outside of country would more or less fall under the cybersecurity new law. Changes are not unique to Brazil certifications. And uh, as long as pro products and technologies evolve, country regulations soon follow. So certifications in Brazil can be difficult if manufacturers do not choose a proven partner that is updated with all the requirements. NTS can make certifications easy, especially when a compliance strategy is requested when manufacturers are entering challenging certifications. NTS not only provides compliance strategies uh, or very um, involved uh, test plans, but we also provide radio, EMC, and cer safety certifications to all recognized countries worldwide for a whole range of products. If there's any questions, you can contact me at Michael Morana at NTS. Dot com. My contact information is listed uh, at the end of this presentation. Thank you.